Before we start today's video, my dumb butt forgot to show what happens if you lose against Rajon during his boss fight, so for your viewing pleasure. Fat, pathetic, weakly. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time, things didn't go quite as planned. Yes, we did take out Rajan and get the Clockwork Heart, however... Neela had betrayed us, Sly and Murray and even Carmelita got captured, and Bentley's all by himself at this moment. Yeah. It was kind of a left-field action that Neela took, and it turns out she was really against us from the very beginning of our adventure together. So now, it is upon me to head over to wherever Sly and Murray got captured to see if we can rescue the pair. So, let's get started with a jailbreak. I feel like with the lack of Sly and Murray there, it should have just been Bentley gearing up three different times. It took a sleepless week of data crunching, but I eventually tracked down the location of my friends, locked away in the mysterious towers of Prague. At the moment, they are the unwilling guests of Interpol's most renowned prison warden, the Contessa. While still a criminal psychology student, she entered into a whirlwind romance and married a wealthy aristocrat. Sadly, the union was short-lived, as the general suspiciously died a few weeks after the ceremony. The widowed Contessa put her education and newly acquired estate to work by opening a criminal rehabilitation center. Her pioneering use of hypnotherapy has produced some good results and subsequently earned her a prominent position within Interpol. My friends are locked up somewhere in the clinic and are slated for the Contessa's good Samaritan brainwashing. If I don't bust them out soon, they'll be working a nine-to-five job selling shoes, and I'll be out two best friends. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all under-identifiable genders, let me introduce to you the worst level in the entire game, although I do have to give it props for its uniqueness. I'm gonna let you know right now, I hate the prison level. I absolutely hate it, and it's not because of some reasons people might think. Yeah, it's kind of a, a sterile level design because it's based around the giant prison up over on yonder hill. But also because of a childhood trauma this level gave me. Uh, before we talk about my childhood trauma, though, uh, let's see what's on the net. Uh, Bentley has a gadget, which is Adrenal Burst, which it basically lets him go fast. It's actually a really useful gadget to have for a later portion of the game, so I'm going to grab it right now because why not? Uh, we got the alarm clock for Sly, which uh, will allow you to toss it and distract guards, which I still think that's probably what that uh, that fake Sly gadget that I still remember, but no one ever seems to believe me that it existed, uh, turned into. So we'll grab that. And finally, this. This is such a trollish placement of a gadget in the entire game that it is just insane. Atlas Strength for Murray. Atlas Strength allows you to jump while carrying somebody, or something. You know, the thing that would have been super useful back when we were in the jungles of India. We don't have the money for it right now, but just let you know uh, that it's there. It also actually has a hidden thing that a lot of, uh, that it doesn't actually tell you in its description. Not only does it let uh, Murray jump while carrying enemies I or- I should make my way over to the Contessa's house. Maybe I'll pick up a few leads on the location of Sly and Murray. Not only does it allow Murray to jump while carrying items or enemies, it also allows him to sprint while doing so. <sighs> we got a big trek ahead of us. We need to go eavesdrop on the Contessa all the way on the other side of town. 
Now, while we sneak our way through here, I'm actually going to wait for him to turn his back because I really don't want to deal with flashlight guards, especially as Bentley. I want to talk about my history with this level. This level traumatized me as a kid, and it wasn't for the reason that some people might think of, oh, the enemies are really scary, the atmosphere is scary, the, the sudden train is scary. No, it's not about that. This level suffers from what I have always liked to call uh, uh, Forest Temple Syndrome, where basically the music of the location is the, the worst part about it. Like how a lot of people don't like the Forest Temple theme from Ocarina of Time, although I never had an issue with it. Ah, oh, crap, there's a flashlight guard coming. Hold on just a second. Go to sleep. And I'm just going to take care of him like that. But the music for this level, it always just made me feel uncomfortable when listening to it because, I don't know, it, it's just that at times it likes to sneak up on you. Okay, okay no guards. Uh, just, it, it starts off low, it starts off like a creepy tone that uh, plays as you go through here. Uh, you got the percussions, you got the, the, the low baritones and such. And then there's just like a time where it just sneaks up on you and just starts picking up in tempo. And it's just like, oh, I don't like it. Never had, never will. Which way? He's going this way. Uh, you. I probably could get that as Bentley, but I'm not going to risk it. It's also worse when, you know, the fact that... Uh, enemies see you, the, the the music picks up, and honestly, I would say that the the music for this level when enemies spot you is worse. God, that clinking's gonna drive me crazy because it's just like, it's right there! Just get it, Bentley! Also, speaking of getting it, I probably should get the adrenaline burst. Another reason why this always creeped me out is the flashlight guards and how, yeah, the flashlight guards for Rajan's uh, section of the game were just like those heavy footsteps because, of course, they're rhinos. But the, the Contessa's vulture guards uh, scraping their crossbows on the floor just, ah, oh, they always just creep me out. Let's see if I can sneak up on this guy. All right, go to sleep. I missed. All right, fine. Ow. All right, well, oh, no, it did not work. I'm surprised the music didn't pick up when that one guard uh, was coming after me. The light was still flashing. Ooh. All right, just going to wait for this tank. Yeah, the Contessa has enough money to have her own personal tank guard uh, go around her house. And let's just sneak our way up to the rooftop and get some recon done. You. Nowadays, the music in this level doesn't really creep me out as much. It it still is a bit unnerving, but just it was just a part of past me just being a big coward and all. Anyways, let's see what we got to do up here. Aha! The Contessa is out making her rounds. Wait a second. The feathers on my sleep darts vibrate near sounds. If I maintain my position on top of this parabolic dish... I should be able to hear that frequency at a distance. This is great! If I tag the Contessa with my darts, I'll be able to listen in on whatever she says. I might even learn where she's locked up Sly and Murray. I don't know how standing on top of this parabolic dish will be allow Bentley to hear the, the frequency of his sleep darts. I don't even know how that even works. He, of course, he's the genius in all this. For now, uh, basically, bit of a shooting gallery. Just hit the Contessa, and let's see what she knows. She is pretty fast, so you have to be pretty on the ball. The Claw Gang is falling apart. Spice shipments have all but stopped. <sighs> I never would have joined if I'd known it would be this easy to disrupt the plan. At least the Cooper Gang is under lock and key. Their lopsided morality flies in the face of man's inherent selfishness. Ah, well. They'll see it my way soon enough. Interesting. So the Contessa is a member of the Claw Gang. The 
people's fools at Interpol. They keep sending me criminals and I keep making money. How come no one ever thought of this before? Hypnotize criminals and force them to reveal where they've hidden their fortune. I'm a genius. If only I had more spice to help me with a hypnosis. Interesting. Yep, top. That blasted Cooper gang. The fat one. What's his name? Murray. Yes, Murray. He'll be the first to break. I should spend a few sessions probing that feeble mind. I can only imagine the wealth that gang has accumulated over the years. Oh, I mean, we spent it all on gadgets, so we don't really have much wealth to our names anymore. Uh, that should definitely have hit her. How about this one? Nope, right between her legs. Left again. She is really fast, so it does not give you a whole lot of time to work with. Huh? She's just sticking to the left this time. That's like Cooper. Such a complex and rebellious mind. A month or two in the hole should break his spirit. Let him squat there week after week. He's seen that the guards along the wall all have motion detectors. There is no escape. Slowly, the reality of his captivity will set in. And I'll get to work on his mind. Inconceivable! She's no healthcare professional! Why, that's the most heinous crime I've ever heard of! Putting inmates into hypnosis so they'll tell her where they've stashed their loot! It dishonors both law enforcement and thieves at the same time! I should get to work and figure out a way to break Sly out of the hole. I mean, even if it, if it is morally reprehensible, you gotta admit, it's still a pretty decent gig, uh, scheme she's got going on. I mean, it's worked out this long for her. Alright, so guess what? Oh dear, oh no. Guess where we need to go now? That's right, we need to go all the way back to where the safe house is. Now, I could go back through town. What? Ah, draw distance, you never fail to make me laugh. I could go back through town. Wow, that is some really bad draw distance down there. Uh, as I was saying, I could go back through town. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Woo. Ow. I could go back through town. I could deal with the tank. I could deal with the flashlight guards. I could deal with the wolf guards or the bad guards that we haven't seen yet, but they're the reinforcer guards. I could do that. Or I could take the expressway back to town. I just need to deal with this guy real quick. Unless, where is he? Oh, he's going all the way up here. All right. Now this is a nifty little trick that I found out myself. Uh, we have to wait for our ride to get here though. I think it's coming towards us, not away from us. Oh no. I'm just gonna put that there as a precaution. I feel like we're gonna have some uninvited. Nope, he's just staying down there. All right, so the train that you've been seeing go by. I wanna wait for it to come out of the tunnel. Jump on down to it, and we're just gonna ride the train all the way back to the safe house. It's best to stick to the side so the pylons up there don't zap you. It probably wasn't a safe spot, but now I am kind of screwed. I have to take the long way back. Oh, never mind. There goes that plan. I guess it's not that bad. Wait for the train to go by, and then we'll just ride the rails. Or I guess, in this case, run along the rails. Oh, boy. And Bentley's mission is right over here. Literally, right in front of the safe house. That computer is part of a control system for the electromagnetic train. By hacking all the terminals along the train tracks, I should be able to reverse their polarity, thereby turning the train into a giant projectile. Without question, its impact on the prison walls should create a hole large enough for Sly to escape through. Uh, where is he going? Where? What? No, look out! There's a train! Oh! Ooh, yeah, you definitely should not be running on train tracks, especially if they're used. 
Well, I kind of feel bad for that flashlight card. Anyways, it's time to start probably what I would say is my lo least favorite type of mission. Bentley's hacking. Ah, nothing like a good computer hack job. Now, the left analog stick should control my cyber avatar. Yeah, just lock it right in place here. I'll have to hack through these barrier nodes. I should move the right analog stick in the direction I want to unleash my hacker code. Now, I have to say this right now. I was never a fan of the hacking minigame in this game. I could tolerate it in the first live game. It, it was a fun, unique thing. It had some fun music time, going all on with it. But I, I always just found the hacking direction. in this game to be really boring until a later point in the game. Also, at times, kind of... Mm, how should I say this? Ridiculous to a degree. That's one down. The train should be picking up speed. Yeah, you're coming down this way, of course you're. What is going on with your lantern candle thing? Of course your friends come up alongside you. Uh, let me see if I can just trick jump over here. There we go. Kind of worked out in my favor because the terminal is right here on the other side of this bridge. Uh, Bentley, you know you should be pressing the key uh, pads, not just the air next to it, right? Oh, well, he's the master hacker of the team. What do I know? I've never hacked into anything <laughs> on record. Blast. All right, there we go. Yeah, these first hacking minigames are pretty easy. In fact, they're kind of insultingly easy. The biggest threat during it is you need to really pay attention to where the train is because I think the train actually has enough force to kill you in one hit. Also, keep an eye out for the flashlight guards patrolling the streets, especially in this section. Because usually in like this little intersection right here, one likes to pull a U-turn and come this way and you just have to sit and wait him out. But thankfully, he's going down that way. I hear that clinking above me. Wish I could get it, but unfortunately, Bentley is not what a lot of people would call vertical or acrobatic. He's not like some raccoon. Now here's why I like to reference as when it's a little too over and cumbersome and a little annoying because it's just like you need to take your focus off the, the wall to deal with the enemies that just like the head rush right into you. That should speed up the train by at least 50%. Cool. Makes my job harder, though. Best to try and stay to the edge of the tracks. Don't try and run down the middle if, as best you can. Because it's going to get a lot faster at this point. Yeah, one, one of the annoying things uh, for the Hack Me game is if you get hit, there's like a, a second to uh, register that you're hit, so you're stunned for that moment, and you can kind of get comboed into oblivion. Like, I've had multiple times in the past where I've been hit by one of these old fast guys, got shot by the, the ones with the turrets on top, and then another one just comboed right into me, and it was just oh, it was ridiculous. But this shouldn't be too bad. We should be able to break through this before the, nope, the next wave's coming. Pathfinding for these things is also pretty precise as well. They are sometimes stupid. Oh dear. But for the most part, they know exactly where to go to hunt you down. Right, we should be able to just sneak our way right into here. Just two more terminals. Alright, up oh, there it goes. Uh, I'm gonna sneak up here real quick. Not gonna even risk going through that tunnel because I know for a fact. Yep, there it goes. Alright, now we can go. Let's just hope this tank doesn't mind me hacking these terminals over here. I think we are actually out of the searchlight for the tank, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. And now, because this game likes to punish me even more, we got ones that will chase you down, run into you, and shoot at you. You know, the, the best combo. I rag on the, the hacking minigame in this game, but to be honest, I actually really like uh, Slide 3 and Slide 4's uh, hacking minigame. Slide 4 varies it up a lot, and Slide 3 actually uh, makes you a little bit more powerful and gives you more stuff to do in it. So I don't mind it as much, it's just at the very beginning of this, it just is really cumbersome and really annoying to do. 
especially I believe there's like one hacky mini game in here that is just ugh, it's the worst. I think it's not until the next episode though. Or maybe it's like episode seven. Yes, the train's at full speed. Now on to reverse the field's polarity. Uh yeah, as much as I would like to ride the train at max speed back and forth on the rails, uh, might as well get this job done. And hopefully not get shot by a tank. And now, of course, they bring... They don't actually have any stationary ones. It's the ones that chase you down, and also the ones that chase you down and shoot at you. Thankfully, there's like only one, maybe two of the ones that shoot at you. And you just have to really deal with the easy to kill uh, fast ones. Yep, it's two. Okay. Either way, we're done. So let's launch this train, shall we? What a beautiful trajectory! Hopefully, no one was riding it. Bullseye. All right. Well, thankfully, Bentley's final mission is just right over there, so we're just gonna sneak our way down. The, uh, nope. Well, there's the reinforcer and what he does. I think he's actually the only reinforcer that doesn't use a megaphone because, you know, he's a bat. He's already loud. It, it, all right, there go the flashlight guards. Although, I'm, yep, they're making their way back. Now, you might be thinking, well, why would I want to come down here to deal with uh, the reinforcer, the flashlight guards, all that stuff? I thought you hated those guys. The reason I don't want to go up there on the bridge is because the, uh, the enforcer guards have a little secret to them for the contestants' levels. They like to disguise themselves as statues. You see these wolf statues back here? Yeah. On some of the rooftops and especially on top of that bridge up there, a couple of them are actually guards in disguise and you don't know which ones it is until it's too late. They do actually have like an indicator of like the sneaking sound uh, will play if you're near one and the little radar thing will go off by your icon. But other than that, there's no real way to tell what's a guard and what's just a statue. Anyways, time for more murder. All the guards along the prison wall are outfitted with a motion tracking device. What is going on with their necks? There's no way for Sly to escape. Unless I take those guys out with my RC chopper. What's that? Someone flying an RC chopper? Three Kill him! Again. I seriously have no idea what's going on with some of these guards' necks. It's like it, they got stunned or something, or got something going on with them. This mission's kind of annoying, I have to admit, because the flashlight guards are kind of accurate with their shots. I'm surprised that a crossbow is able to do this much damage to an RC chopper and also be this accurate from the angle that they're shooting at, because they don't use their arms, or I guess in this case their wings, they shoot from their feet. Honestly, with how much evasive maneuvering you're doing, you don't really have to worry about the missiles. It's the shots from the guards, and you're really right there. Okay, fine. Get out there. Get him? Nope. I, I disagree with how that shot came out of there, but alright, whatever, he's dead. And I'm almost dead too. Bentley, I hope you got insurance on this thing. Sly, can you read me? How I've missed that sensuous voice of yours. Save the jocular comments for later. Do you see that hook above the train? Yeah. It's your only means of escape. Jump and hit the circle button to grab hold. Then swing onto the back of the train. I've already established a safe house and downloaded its GPS coordinates into your binocucom. We'll rendezvous there. Wow, you've really thought of everything. Don't I always? Yeah, you do. Thanks for busting me out. Oh, well. You know the old saying, if you can't count on a friend to bust you out of jail, what kind of a friend are they? Truer words were never said, wizard. That's that's a nice little callback. I really like it. Also, you know, it's nice of the Contessa to uh, imprison Sly with its cane, his gadgets, his binocucom, and basically not put him in, like, prison attire. It was really considerate of her. And also, you gotta think, 
how long has been in prison for? Because it was like, we went from the jungles of India, so that had to take a while. I'm, I'm gonna guess they got flown to Prague, so that would be like, maybe like a two, three hour flight. And then, uh, it took a week of data crunching for Bentley to even find where Sly and Murray were taken. Which, you know, a week. And then, Bentley had to make his way out of the jungle and all the way to Prague in the team van. He didn't fly there, so I'm gonna say that was probably a couple day trip, so I would say Sly's been trapped here for maybe half a month. Plus, you gotta take into account uh, Bentley preparing to go into here, scouting out a location, uh, doing a background check on Contessa, getting her backstory and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say that Slime Murray had been here for a, about a week, uh, about a week, maybe two weeks. Uh, I hate the fact this place is so heavily trafficked. You know what? Uh, give me the alarm clock. We take the stupid self stealth slide off of me because I always found it just pointless. And unfortunately, you guys are not carrying any shinies in your pocket, so oh, of course he is. Dare I? Dare I? I don't dare. But I will take him out though. Alright, time to run. Okay, here's the situation. I've done some deep database crunching and figured out that Murray is doing time in cell block D. Getting him out is going to be tough. As you know, he's not very light on his feet. First, we'll need to get Murray into an isolation cell away from the other inmates. Second, I'll need you to get a sample of the Contessa's encryption algorithm. Don't worry, I'll explain later. Third, you'll need to pickpocket a few keys from the Contessa, but watch out for her pack of bodyguards. And fourth, you'll have to deactivate her giant attack robot. No, really, Sly, I'm serious. The Contessa has a giant attack robot. It just looks like a water tower. Now, once you've pulled off all these jobs, we'll be ready to make a play for the big guy. <laughs> 